Ni bola ni bola na sema chiko mai bola vina kama vua bola vina kalami pacifica ba vika mina sema chiko mai suba kena vivu noa bola kata don bola vina kama makoi mai visari don bola vina kata lenga na vivu noa meno sorry lambasa vaka lenga kiri me raki raki kesi na toka ni bola vina kama don bola vina kama sema chiko mai na vesi burubura islandi. Mei Australia, dua puluh lima nak mei wangkan nui, nimbula nak tak kau nala bo. Nimbula nimbula vinaka na sema tiko mai vakumbuli chaka ni viki mni na vio kani oni vakarongo tiko mai na vese viti kene vese burubura nimbula na kwa na tako na lavo na bulo baka turanga o na mosi tosti kuna na nanda vita la no na bulongo na bula ke na mosi na bula okotova maro tek sarwa kelebu ni sema tiko mai na nanda bulangi sema sar tiko mai na tau ni rere totoka kilelebu o wanga nui Meni Selandi. Tonton ni cik ngon na Labor Weekend. Mua ni madam balabu Meni Selandi. Ngol sar cik ngon ngon wakam bulu me Hawaii. Bikin ni kaitan na Tauke, yang ini tiko meni Selandi. Bukan tengah kini Australia ni maru tiki tiko na Labor Weekend. Leh oklan itu ana mua ni madawa ni bukan dengu, mua ni madawa ni bukan tak kana, mua tengah ni madawa menda satu satu kini bukan biokani. Di tengah ni sebab tiko na sama tumbu ni mati ngon na Covid. Ia dalam marau ni, ya kami ni kuat. Saya masih cukup bimbang nuh itu dalam marama. Karena saya mesti kau na 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 nona bubale, en kena nona ra, kena bawa nuah bawa turanga, oh na musi. Dan orang orang mesti nak bawa kumpul sara, we Helen puhi puhi. Bula nak kau Helen. Nisa bula bina ka, Nisa meleka na sere. Yeah, <laughs> really homesick. Yes, Dambula Binaka. So, what's the weather like there at the moment, uh, Helen, in Wanganui? Uh, Nikua, I don't know about ya, nothing I yes, here, but. Basaki mai iyo. Just one of those real spring mornings. Yes. Oh, vinak, vinak wakalevu, and we're just so grateful that we know how busy you are, 
And uh, even today, as you said earlier, it was meant to be yeah, that we can uh, spend the, at least 45 minutes today of your hour of uh, holiday, Labor Weekend, uh, to spend with me on this program. So I give you time now, Helen, just to say hello to your Bubale all around the world and those who are listening in from uh, Fiji. <laughs> to you and Carlos, we came on draw. Um, uh, and Helen uh, uh, Johnson, Puhi Puhi. Yao Sudhui Navua. I was born in Navua. Uh, and my namesake, um, Helen, um, was a midwife and she, um, and I was born on the 1st of Jan in 1955. Uh, my mum uh, was um, Valerie Fanny uh, Dunn, um, the eldest child of boy uh, Joseph and Marama uh, Dunn from Tungoro. So uh, my grandparents, uh, um, and being the um, firstborn and loved everything about it. My grandmother was a beautiful lady from Drakena and Rewa. And I was blessed that the first language was Fijian. Was, um, Rewan, the Rewan dialect. So I used words like gai and <laughs> from my um, bumbu, um, rama. Um, yes, my um, living in the village has taught me and been a good grounding for where I have gone in life. And I always give thanks to and quite humble by uh, being brought up, surrounded by love, by family, um, in a place where we could explore um, and lived off the sea and the land. Um, I loved those days. Um, and um, my um, grandparents, uh, I could do no wrong. I could pick guawas, I could go and get bivili and, uh, you know, do whatever I wanted, fish um, and um, look for lumi. And uh, so I was immersed in that and gathering coconuts. Um, yeah, our home was um, bure with the bracken fir underneath, yeah and uh, bamboo um, built um, uh, kitchen. So um, for me, I, I, the um, first thing I'd remember and being brought up in Tungoro is my grandmother sleeping beside her um, as the Psalms. She'd wake up and say uh, Masu and uh, singing the Psalms. And to this day, I, I miss that. And I've even asked our um, Fijian ministers, they don't sing the Psalms like they used to in the old days. And um, it used to be wonderful waking up in the morning to, uh, to that experience, yeah. And about the sharing, you know, in our village custom that whatever we got we shared with our families um, the magoons who were there the um the other dance grandpa tom dan uh, who were there and my uncle um who uh, abram who had his home there yeah so everything that we did we shared our planting of even peanuts and uh, uh, and uh, tavioca yeah so and it was a beautiful life I was richly um, rewarded in things that God had blessed us with um, you know and I never 
to this day, I always feel so thankful to God for blessing me in my early years uh, of being in the village and being immersed in um, the language, the culture that strengthened me as I um, progressed through and went into uh, town, uh, into Lotoka to start primary school uh, at Lotoka European School. Yeah, my, um, my uh, family line comes um, from the first Irishman um, who was, um, who came to uh, Fiji and he was a black birder. And um, he and um, he actually looked after the coastal area. Uh, his his name um, was um, James Dunn, but in Fiji they called him Tim uh, Timina Kumindamu, and he um, married um, into Ratasuli's family, the, his great great grand aunt uh, and the Avunona. Who, um, who uh, Vasu from uh, Rewa as well. Mm. Um, and he, um, he had um, a few children. He had nine all up and uh, his eldest son was George Dunn. So you'll hear the names that come through that still run in our Dunn family, mm -hmm. who, um, who married Vale from Namara and um, Eva. Then there were the there was um, Bumbukiti who married into the Benyans. Uh, then there was. Um, um, Grandpa Barney, who had no issue. Then there was uh, Aunt, uh, Granny Rusi, who married into the Gauls. Then Granny uh, Bumbu Wani, who married into the Hoyts. Then um, Bumbu Miriani, who married into the Farrells. Uh, and uh, Grandpa James, uh, who married into Nandronga, Karolaini, Vosamailangi. Then there was Bumbu Jesse, who married into the Magoons, and Bumbu Cecilia, who married into the Berts, uh, Bertie Berts. I only met one of them, and that was Bumbu Cecilia. And they were really fair, slim, and blue eyes. But when they spoke, it was Namosi dialect. And unfortunately, I have, um, that's a goal for me to uh, learn is the Namosi dialect, um, mm -hmm. which um, in my um, 66 years, I, that's one of the goals I want to, uh, want to achieve here yeah, before I make it. <laughs> the eldest of um, his grandchildren was George, uh, George Dunn, and uh, George Dunn uh, married uh, Bumbu Eva, um, and uh, uh, Bumbu Marama, which was my uh, grandmother, and um, they. Um, lived in, um, in Tomorrow. And gra uh, Grandpa Boyd, they used to call him that, uh, had two, uh, had a twin sister, Bumbu Kitty, who married uh, one of the Nandindis, uh, Avi Salome, who was a translator from Singatoka, Nand uh, Nandrunga Singatoka. Yeah. And, uh, Auntie Abumbu Avungona married one of the Hoyts. And then there was uh, Grandpa, um, Grandpa Barney who married May Evening. 
done. And then there was my namesake, Helen, who married uh, Abram Siri, who was in, uh, lived in Navua, just um, up from the Heartbreak Hotel. Hotel. <laughs> Everyone who's from uh, Navua and Namosi should know all about the Heartbreak Hotel. Um, then there was my grandfather, Joseph or Boyd, and he um, had, um, he married Bumbu Marama and they had eight children. Mm. And I'm the offspring of Valeria or Penny, who married Albert Johnson from Yanuza Lothala Lakondrobe. Um, so that's my connection with um, with uh, Namosi, and we're all Vasu of Ratusuli, and we've gone all over the world. Um, the Duns have um, through, you know, we have married into Chinese, Indian, um, Muslim. Um, so we are a League of Nations, and for myself, Maori. Yeah, so we're a League of Nations and we're a huge family. If we came back all to a big reunion and came back to uh, tomorrow, I don't think there'll be enough space for all the offspring from the first um, Jane Sun and Andy Avumona. So that's a bit about my connections to. Um, to wow. Namosi and um, truly, um, you know, believe that it was from there that early foundations were set about serving, about serving our people. And uh, irrespective of what ethnicity they were mm. um, and also the, my belief in God and doing that to this day if you know uh, early morning saying prayers at about half past three four and mm -hmm. um back in the village you will blow the embers to put the kettle on uh yeah and uh you didn't need matches or anything uh, the, you know the embers were covered up at night next morning you blow the embers again and add a few twigs and it fires up yeah so um yeah so for me it was um so many foundations were um were built there in tomorrow um and a wonderful to see our family mm -hmm. who are still at home mm -hmm. caring and doing the same things that our ancestors have always done. Yeah. So proud to be Namosi. Yay! <laughs> and we'll always, you know, that's my heart there. Uh, my heart is always in the coral uh, with uh, seeing all our fa uh, family um, mm. there and uh, the children. You know, wow. so long live tomorrow, and uh, um, all the workers uh, who are there, and just thank God daily for their lives mm. and uh, what they're doing for us, and respecting mm. the gift that the Tuina Mossi gave mm. to the Duns, um, so that we could call a place in the Mossi home. Nice. Wow, that was so beautiful and uh, so many of the families are connecting in and uh, sharing their hearts and love to what you've just shared with us today. Vakambula Sari Tongoru to everybody listening in from Tongoru, Bula Bula Vinaka and it's uh, just so lovely to have uh, uh, Helen Puhi Puhi here with us to share with us her memories of growing up in uh, in uh, Navua and her connection to Namosi. So the people of Namosi, I'm sure, uh, always acknowledge yeah, the, the connection uh, 
uh, to the Vu Valley, uh, the, of the Tuinomosi, and especially to the villagers and the people in Tongoru who continue to excel in everything that you do. So definitely so true, Helen. If you have a, a family reunion, uh, Tongoru will be too small for you. So you might have to choose <laughs> choose another place or maybe stagger the reunion yeah? <laughs> So maybe one family per year. So So would you be able to share with us as to what took you to New Zealand? Um, and we just want to congratulate you, uh, Helen, for the amazing work you have done in the field of early childhood and uh, the work that you have done, not only in Wanganui, but it has impact all across Aotearoa. Would you like to share with us as to what motivated you to go into the field of early childhood education? For me, um, the um, best early childhood education I had was with uh, my Bumbu and uh, my grandpa in Tomorrow. And um, I was fortunate to, when I turned five, going back, mum and dad took me to the big city of Lotoka and went to uh, Lotoka European School, which was called then, for all um, children of the sugar uh, corporation workers. Um, so I was um, taught by New Zealand teachers who came over. From there, I went on to, you know, did all the secondary entrance and that, and went on to Natambua High School. Um, and at Natambua High School, I was a uh, head girl in my sixth form year and um, was um, awarded um, three scholarships. One was um, uh, the Commonwealth Scholarship to come to New Zealand to do my teacher training. Um, the other one was a YMCA one to go to Australia. Um, and the last um, one was to go to England. I picked New Zealand because it was closest to home as I shared with my mum and dad uh, and my mumbo because if anything happened to her, I wanted to be mm. come back and it was only three hours um, flying at that time. Um, and, um, and if I didn't like it, it was easy for me to go home to just one flight. Yeah. So I um, was fortunate to um, come over on a Commonwealth scholarship back in 72 and um, went to a residential um, teacher's college at um, Papakura in Auckland um, and did my uh, teacher training at that time. And that's where people like Howard Politini um, was there. And many, uh, there was about 10 of us who left, Kathy Wong, Doreen Dart, um, and um, we were blessed in that we, when we came on a scholarship, we actually got paid fortnightly. And uh, we were very rich because all our meals were catered for, the accommodation was catered for, and then we could still save to go home uh, to see the family or send money home uh, at that time. Um, you know, but um, it, it was something like $76 a fortnight. But if you think back, uh, that was pretty good money to be on a scholarship in, in New Zealand. Um, but it was a whole lot of learning. And I think what made it easier was that there was a group of us from Fiji. So we were all experiencing that uh, loneliness, missing family, um, yeah. But we actually formed a very good Pacifica group because there were ones from Tonga, mm -hmm. from Samoa there as well. And, uh, you know, did church services and, um, 
yeah, supported one another because we are all we are all experiencing the same things, and we knew how um, how much uh, you know we miss the food, miss mm. the family laughter. Uh, so that you know, we all became uh, a real big Ardmore family. Um, was fortunate to, uh, at that time too, you're, because when you come on scholarship, you're bonded to the Fiji government. Yeah. Um, and um, dad um, shared this, I take friends home for, uh, for Christmas and that, and um, told um, my husband, you know, uh, I have to go home and serve my bond so that our family are not shamed or, you know, um, we're obligated um, to fulfill the bond. And uh, that's what dad ha and mum had shared too. Always be thankful, always give back so that when you leave, you fulfilled your obligations. Um, mm. And uh, yeah, so got married in 1979 after doing three years. And I went back to Brass Avenue School, my school I attended um, when I was in primary uh, to teach under uh, William Williams, Bill Williams, yeah. And um, it, was, it was really quite, um, emotional for me going back uh, to teach uh, in the junior department there. And um, the best thing about teaching at, at home, you learn so much from others around you, from your family, from the children especially. Yeah. So um, in 79, I got married and came over to New Zealand um to to teach yeah and i taught in auckland schools uh freeman's bay and glenavon school um and then at that time you um and i had my daughter um audrey esther and at that time you had to do a country service if you wanted to go into management positions. Mm. So we um, decided to come to Wanganui, uh, come to Wanganui away from, um, you know, anyone we knew so we'd, we could work and uh, run a school. So we came to the heart of the Wanganui River mm. um, and that was in 1982. Um, and uh, by that time, I had a two-year-old um, Maori, Irish, uh, from the Dun side, um, and her grandmother's side, uh, Fijian daughter. Yeah. And the beauty of it was whenever we were in um, New Zealand in Wanganui, whenever she was tired or what the simple words she'd use, you know, um, uh, vale, vale mean it's time to go home. <laughs> we'd use keys like that, yeah. Um, mother, mother, yeah. So, uh, yeah, kana, kana. So she'd say things in Fijian in a Maori situation and in a Fijian situation at home, we'd use Maori words, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, uh, to, um, you know, to get attention without upsetting anyone. We didn't want to upset people, yeah. So, um, yeah, so we were pretty good at using Maori in Fiji and using Fijian and her Maori situations, where she comes from the East Coast. Um, her dad comes from the East Coast. And um, it was beautiful and that it was through her dad that gave me the interest in whakapapa and genealogy because they are very um, renowned for 
following through right back to the seven um, wakas, the, their, their journey from Hawaii to Aotearoa. So it was through um, that interest and researching that um, I started researching my Namosi side, um, hence getting uh, all the family history. Um, and um, my grandpa Semisi Dan uh, was their mum and um, Uncle Tom Dan, uh, mum's younger brother, who was there, you know, and we could trace our family lines right back to um, James Dunn, the first Dunn, and how the land was given and, uh, yeah, and the family connections, which are far and wide all over the world, yeah. Wow. So, um, yeah, so that's my journey here. Then I went into tertiary education uh, for many years in helping our Pacific, our Fijian teachers or Pacific teachers who were qualified at home, but their qualifications weren't recognized here. Mm -hmm. So there was a Te Rangakura bilingual teaching program and had quite a few um, people like Mathieu Vudango, who's uh, who's from Delma, he actually got involved and is doing really well now at uh, Victoria University. And a lot of our teachers who ended up going into early childhood, followed me into early childhood. But at that time as well, we found that there was a growing number of Pacific families and uh, we had no um, way of keeping our identity, language, and culture um, here in Aotearoa. So um, uh, we met and put a development plan in. Uh, that's after Ratumara came, uh, and he was the keynote speaker at one of our big Pacifica Vision Conference, a national one that the Ministry of Pacific Peoples ran. Yeah. So from that, uh, when we met, I thought my forte is education, right? So I uh, feel it is through education that our Pacific children, be there Fijian, Samoan, Cook Island, which were the main. Um, groups here in Whanganui, um, you know, will retain their identity, language and culture. So born and raised um, Pacifica Early Childhood Centre became the first uh, Pan-Pacific um, Early Childhood um, Education and Care Service and Whanganui, and at that time, the Minister of Education was the, is the Speaker of the House, now Trevor Mallard, he was. And he loved it because he um, saw it as being, if Pacific centres were wanting to be viable, they had to work together because we as Fijians didn't have the numbers to have a center of our own, mm -hmm. uh, same with the Samoans. And a lot can start off, you know, how population yeah. ebbs and flows. Um, they'll start off big, then all of a sudden they grow up, but then there's a gap of a few years before. Yeah. But having a pan Pacific, um, would sustain us and be economically viable for uh, little provincial areas like Whanganui in um, New Zealand. Mm. So we became the first licensed one. Yeah, praise God for the, yeah. for the lands he has. Yeah. And at that time too, I was on, uh, and still is, on the early childhood advisory group. 
to the Ministry of uh, Education. And I was the Pacific convener of the early childhood strategic plan, the 10 year plan for government and did research on language acquisition with Dr. Ann Mead and Dr. Susan Foster Cohen. And really it was all based on how we learn in Fiji, just the community languages where you can pick up Hindustani, you can pick up Fijian, you can pick up Chinese, just in the community. Um, yeah, and uh, so it was all based on that experience and about being immersed and as long as the language mm. is um, articulated correctly, mm. our mm. children will be in a good space and did research about places in Europe who children were speaking five languages because they border uh, so many countries. Mm. Um, so that's where our early childhood centre stem for. And we were the first ones who focused on our children's identity, language and culture as our base, as our foundation. And our philosophy was based on respect, integrity, service and excellence. Um, you know, based on the way we're brought up at home. There's mm. always respect in everything we do. There's always integrity, and we're here to serve with excellence in whatever we do. So that has been what our philosophy is, and in respecting our children's identity, language, and culture. Mm. Um, and now in New Zealand, that's the biggest growing Pacific centers um, as the pan-Pacific ones, more than the uh, just one ethnic group, uh, you know, like Samoans with Aungamata. Mm. The big centers and cities can afford to do that, right. but in our provincial areas and some suburbs, we need to work. And in Fiji, how we work together, as a family, I look at my own family, whether you're Muslim, whether you're Chinese, whether you're um, Hindu, uh, you know, Hindu, mm. yeah, you just all work together as a uh, big family, still respecting their values and beliefs. And, uh, you know, there's always, once we put that as, as our cornerstone and, and our learning, mm. um, we um, find a common ground and mm. that our families will survive and su uh, succeed daily in their learning and their love for learning. Mm. Then in 2017, we because the numbers got so great, we opened our second centre uh, Pacifica Learning Centre um, and um, the, uh, last year we opened our Pacifica Innovation Hub for our holiday program so we can continue with the um, philosophy of respect, integrity, service, excellence and also bring our children back who have gone into primary and secondary to immerse them mm. in, in the village again, in the village system. And that's what we do at home. You know, we'll be in the towns, urbanized, but then we go back to the village where we know our place, we're grounded again. And you just need to go to the uh, cemetery to see all your ancestors and yeah. So, um, that's what um, we have as a village system. And this year we opened our library uh, with a focus on um, Pacifica. And so that the children's love for books and early literacy, um, you know, is, is provided. Things that are meaningful for them. Uh, in our Pacific Innovation Hub, because of COVID, 
uh, we had to really relook really at servicing the whole community in Wanganui with well care packs and food packs. So that's become where we store and we're blessed to have donations from mm -hmm. local bodies, from Horizons Council, from um, our regional central leaders, mm -hmm. um, our Ministry of Pacific Peoples and WINS, so that we're able to mm -hmm. help support our families because it's not easy with mm -hmm. the loss of jobs, employment, the yes. increase in cost. So mm -hmm. we've actually gone wider than just an education and care service. Uh, and now we're, the village is providing a holistic package mm -hmm. for our, our community here oh, in Wanganui. So wow. oh, man, Helen, um, just a huge congratulations from many of our listeners come uh, messaging, uh, remembering your family, a lot of uh, our some Navo residents, remembering the Dan family, Bolivina Kalasalini in Ravi Sao, uh, who's logging in from uh, California. Also, there's another brother of mine in Japan, uh, Master Le, Leone, who said he remembered your hospitality uh, in uh, Wanganui when the school students from Queen Victoria School uh, visited um, Wanganui. So I think on that note, uh, Helen, uh, most of us remember your smiling face, your happy, you know, personality, and uh, just to see you today and just to hear your voice. Oh my goodness, uh, the many memories I have of you, you know, uh, Helen, you've done so many of us proud and you keeping the the Fiji flag flying, and not only Fiji, but the Namosi flag flying <laughs> uh, in, uh, in New Zealand. And so now there's a, a lot of young ones listening in, uh, many from Namosi. What would be your advice to them as far as uh, language, culture, and heritage is concerned, uh, reminding them about their heritage? What would be your advice, Helen? Oh, Inaka. For me, um, my advice is to um, always be thankful um, for being blessed, you know, with coming from Namosi, with uh, your identity, language, and culture, and um, always be, being there to, to serve, you know. I, um, my bumbu uh, actually said, um your path in life because my uh, grandfather on my dad's side wanted me to be a nurse yeah and in talking to her she said your your pathway future pathway the man upstairs and uh, has it all planned for you yeah uh, you don't know it but you'll see it eventuate and, um, you know, I look back and always thank my Bumbu uh, for that advice. So um, for us, and it's about hard work as well, but always remembering to, to um, share, you know, with, I used to ring home a lot when, you know, when mum and dad were alive, yeah. And any projects, like even to this day, um, that's happening in the village, we still do it. Even to this day, we are going back to Tungoro and we've done coconut planting, we've got mangroves, you know, we're thinking of solar heating uh, in the village and getting the water through um, uh, the mangrove plants and uh, trying to get uh, a seawall built, um, and and I love it meeting um, you know Ratu Suli Fair, who's we're internally grateful for, who comes along, uh, and uh, all these kailomas, you know. I'm usually apologising and saying Bosoti Kato Ratu Suli Ratu, yeah, and he's just so beautiful and that he accepts us for who we are you know and some of our done 
than men still love what the ancestors did with the alcohol or the grog and yeah and um yeah so it's um for me those are places where i go back and um get inspired to do more to do more so for young ones always be thankful for your roots irrespective of how um, much people say that you weren't rich okay being in the village believe you me that's the richest lifestyle i've ever lived yeah uh and um and you know being older now yeah i'm back into drinking droni molly and all <laughs> this wonderful eating fresh greens and belly and i wish we could get it in Wanganui, but i have to eat spinach and so <laughs> we'll be here always be thankful for whatever it is or your upbringing um, because you are rich because you find you come out into the mm -hmm. open wide world that the cost there's a lot of stress if you don't manage your money mm -hmm. if you don't you know trying to fit into something that mm -hmm. you're not be mm -hmm. proud of who you are and always give back, you know, at, um, at my age, we love going back. And I think my cousins in Australia, Sissy and uh, Uncle Tom's and Marama, uh, Uncle Tom's children and my family, my brothers, yeah, who, um, you know, all of a sudden we say, come on, Solly, we're going to do this for the village. And, uh, and we do it and, and it's fun and, uh, you know, sustains us for any challenges that um, we have. Yeah. So, yeah, be proud of where you come from and know that often that's the richest life you could ever live. Because when you come out into the big wide world, it is a totally different well, that's full of anxiety, full of, uh, I find, people who backstab you and say you'd never achieve, mm. but that's all right. Toso nga na toso. <laughs> and be, yeah, be grateful. Yeah. And just pray, you know, thank God daily. Uh, and always remember home. Mm. Never forget that. Wow. And to always be Fijian, you know, irrespective of whether you're born in the States or New Zealand, Australia, just your characteristics, your features, your way of being will always show people that you're Fijian. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, and, and saying that, be true to yourself because you're so unique. Mm -hmm. um, and that I've been humbled by receiving the Queen's Service Medal mm -hmm. for services to education and uh, the Pacific community. Mm -hmm. And that was in the New Year's Honours List in 2020. So, um, you know, and uh, uh, sorry, yeah, uh, 2020. And um, for all that, it was all about what I learned in the village. Mm. Can put it all back to with my grandparents in the village and the way we live. So, um, Renaka. <laughs> so uh, thank you so much, uh, Helen, from all of us who are listening in. There's so many uh, of your family connecting in from around the world. Bulavinaka to all the Wuvale uh, Nadan. Uh, everywhere you're listening in from, uh, as Helen has said, you are uh, like a League of Nations. You are everywhere around the world. And uh, we're saying Bula from Hawaii 
and uh, saying bula to Helen in uh, Wanganui and just to acknowledge the amazing work, Helen, that you have done uh, on behalf of all of us in Fiji. You made us so proud and you continue to do such wonderful work. So from all of us, a huge congratulations uh, from us, uh, Auntie Helen. And uh, we know that this is not, not going on only to be the only time we'll tell her no. I want to uh, see if I can invite you again sometime in the future, particularly to talk about your other community projects that you have done. And uh, I keep watching from here in uh, Hawaii and uh, you're not slowing down, Helen. And I know you're gonna be doing more amazing things. So from all of us, Vinaka Vakalevo. Vinaka Vakalevo for the Talanoa. And God bless you all. And hope to see you in Nabua, but not at the Heartbreak Hotel. Nisa <laughs> Motemanda. Uh, for joining us all the way from beautiful Wanganui. Uh, we are so blessed to have her join us today. What a treat. Uh, she took us down memory lane all the way back to Tomoru in uh, Navua. And uh, we, the people of Namosia, are so proud of the work that uh, Auntie Helen has done, and especially with the Queen Services Medal that she was awarded uh, last year in 2020, acknowledging the amazing work that she has contributed to Aotearoa in the field of education. So from all of us here in Hawaii and around the world, huge congratulations, Auntie Helen, and we will definitely be in, in touch again, and you will be back to share more talano because I know you still have more talano to share. Daka bakalevu, mother manda. In the mossy bed. Yes. Mother manda. Daka.